So let's start off with some basic concepts. First, what's fame? Who are celebrities? Now, if you look at the etymology of these words, you find that they're rooted in 13th century, 14th century Latin terms, denoting reputation or public opinion. And that meaning is carried over into the literature on the topic. If you read up on fame, it's used in general to denote a person who is known by strangers, or fame itself is renowned by strangers. It happens when people who you don't know, they recognize you, they know they have information of you, they might have feelings or opinions of you. They're relating to you as a person, uh, even though they don't know you personally. And when one person knows many people like that, they have fame. And a person who possesses fame is celebrity. Now, uh, fame can occur on different levels. There are people who are very, very famous, you know, like Tom Hanks or the president of the United States. But fame can go down to local levels where, for example, people in a small town know the local weatherman or even people in New York City know who the weatherman is on New York One. And it even happens, for example, a microcosm of that happens on college campuses where a lot of students might know a large lecture professor, right? And it's a situation where there's that asymmetry. One, one per, or, uh, many people know one person. One person is known to many people. Now on the surface, this might strike you as obvious or an uninformative definition, but conceptualizing it of this way has a lot of benefits. One is uh, it allows you to recognize fame that doesn't resonate with you personally. Because one of the problems in studying fame is that fame is, our sense of fame is highly personalized. Uh, and as researchers, we need objective standards. Um, there is a tendency, or, or, uh, you know, I'll get to it. Let me move forward and I'll, I'll get to it. So one way to probe what's meant by a concept is to look at how researchers measure it. And the way it, celebrity has been measured uh, in, in, in has evolved over recent decades but there's still a common core, common meaning that's being captured. Now, before the internet, uh, usually uh, people used uh, sales data as uh, a proxy for fame. So for example, if Will Smith were to star in a movie, they'd see what Will Smith, whether a Will Smith movie drew a lot. And if Will Smith's movies draw a lot, they infer that he's a star. Now that happened with smaller and medium-sized media uh, enterprises in particular, because uh, sales data, they had to collect it for accounting purposes. But back in the day, a lot of the more detailed knowledge that big enterprises had was developed using social scientific research methods, just like the kind we teach here at Queens College. And in fact, a lot of media research has its roots in sociology uh, through work, especially by Paul Lazarsfeld, um, is well known in that era. And they did what we do. They ran focus groups, they ran surveys, and they would uh, find ways to quantify celebrity. And here's an example of that on the screen. This is called a Q score. It's still being put out. And what it is, is it's made by running surveys and asking panels of respondents to rate whether or not they recognize a celebrity and how they feel about celebrities. And this is Q scores from uh, 2017. It's for uh, national morning TV anchors. So as you see here, uh, recognizability, like we said, uh, part of celebrities just being known to their people. And you can see there are, are morning announcers like Kathy Lee Gifford or Al Roker, uh, you know, George Stephanopoulos, who are very widely known. And then there's uh, affect like a positive Q score. This is how much people like the celebrity. So people like Kathy Lee Gifford might be well-liked or widely known, but not well-liked. Whereas uh, people might not know Robin, well, Robin Roberts is well-known, but people who know Sam Champion or Josh Elliott seem to like him. Now, with the internet, our ability to measure fame has grown uh, considerably. We're, we were able to move from self-reports to behavioral data rather than asking people who they like, asking people if they paid attention to a uh, celebrity. We could just see who they surfed for. We could see, you know, who they followed on Facebook, you know, where they clicked. Uh, and so what's happened is it, 
we've built a much more enriched capacity for quantifying fame. And there's a lot of efforts going on to, to find ways to uh, put better numbers on celebrities. And it's also created a lot of uh, knowledge in the celebrity space. They know that. And now there's a lot, there's a lot of efforts to game that system, either by purchasing followers, uh, hiring algorithms to make it look like more people share your stories or click on your links and things like that. Now, even though the methods have changed, there's still the same basic insight that they're getting at. How much, how widely someone is known, what do people know of them, and how do people feel about them? So times have changed. The methods we use to measure it have changed, but it, it has a timeless core. No, renowned to strangers and the feelings associated with it. 